good morning, everyone. I'm your host, Vic Sinise, and welcome to the Europatient Podcast. I've been a urology nurse for over 40 years, and this is my way of returning the favor to do this program just for you guys. If you're watching us on our, any of our favorite stations like YouTube or Facebook, we come to you live every Saturday with a new episode at 1030 a.m. Central Time. Be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button. It'll help us out. Hey, if you're new to the show, be sure to check us out on Europatient.com. That's the best place to learn more about the show, pick up and watch older episodes. So be sure to check that out. We've got links to our YouTube page, our Facebook page, um, and our downloads area. These are handouts that I put together from um, many of the ones I produced throughout my career and great information to have about every procedure. So every episode has its own handout. Today, we're going to be continuing our journey on BPH treatments. We've done medications. We did resume last week. Now we're going to look at Urolift. And as I kind of talked about the prostate looking like a donut, well, if that hole gets too small, you can kind of staple it open just like you see there. So these are what we call our minimally invasive therapies. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So resume we did, Urolift we're doing today. We have ITIN and Optolum still to do. So you've got plenty to learn about your prostate, things that we can do in the office. Now, one thing I did forget to mention when I was talking about Resume is the uh, pre-op evaluation. So most patients are going to go through a couple of procedures in the office before you have this done. The one you see on the left is a flexible cystoscopy. And we talk about in episode five about cystoscopy, so you can check that out for more information. But the doc wants to take a look inside and see how the prostate looks from the inside. There's certain structures they have to confirm are there or not there. And then on the right side, we see the ultrasound machine. That's our transrectal ultrasound. We saw that for prostate biopsies. We use that same machine, size of a finger, placed inside the rectum to take an outside picture and a measurement of your prostate. There are some parameters that uh, we have to look at to know what procedures are going to work for you. So these are all custom procedures per patient. So anyway, forgot to mention that, didn't want to forget about it. So the patient prep is stopping blood thinners, a fleet enema the night before, and most likely you'll get an antibiotic in the office. We give it by injection. I wanted to take a second and talk about the bowel prep because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, we, we recommend a fleet enema. Everybody has their own bowel prep, but a lot of patients get confused with the colonoscopy prep, which is really to clean you out from stem to stern. And you take some stuff that you drink and it takes, you know, several hours before it even works. Well, fleet enema works right away. So it's you put it in the rectum, you squeeze the bottle, and it's pretty simple to use, but you're going to get a result right away. Now, sometimes patients will say, well, yeah, it came right out, but I had nothing there. Perfect. That's what we want is make sure there's nothing right in the rectum. Because as you can see from the other picture where that probe is showing, it doesn't have to go in very far. And we just want to make sure there's no stool there. That's why we do a bowel prep. Now, anesthesia in general, uh, same anesthesia as we did for the resume. We do a local anesthetic to the penis that you see on the left. That's a gel that we just squirt in. Um, we, uh, with or without Pronax, that's, uh, patients usually take that in. Um, the reason we offer it as an option that you don't have to have it is it doesn't get covered by insurances. And so there is a cost for most offices to have that. Uh, but it's going to make you nice and happy like that guy. It just makes you a little drowsy and makes it easier to do the procedure for you. And then a block to the prostate, as we see on the right-hand side, because that probe goes in there, we inject with a needle right into the prostate and get it nice and numb. That's the whole key to doing this procedure painlessly. Now, this is what it looks like. That's a Urolift uh, uh, instrument. So it's a what we call a rigid cystoscope. It goes in through the penis, and that's how we're able to do the procedure. So it's a rigid instrument. You can check out episode five, as I had mentioned, if you want to learn more about that. Now, this is from their website from the Urolift company, and it shows what... Uh, it kind of looks like what it's doing. It's basically, as you can see, and the scope goes into the prostate and fires these little compression implants, they call call them. They're like a suture with, um, I call it staples, with like little staple ends on the end. And it pulls open the prostate like you see in step three. Now, I do have a video from the company. I think that uh, clears things up a lot more. It shows a, a little animation of how it's done. I'm going to play that for you right now. The Eurolift system procedure is a proven, minimally invasive technology designed to treat men with an enlarged prostate caused by benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. 
It has been shown to relieve urinary symptoms and improve quality of life with minimal side effects. The Urolift system treatment is often performed in a clinic setting under local anesthesia. The Urolift system procedure begins by inserting an implant delivery device into the urethra. An inserted cystoscope provides the physician with visibility to the anatomy. Once the tip of the delivery device is in the bladder, the needle safety is pressed to unlock the device. On reaching the area of the urethra blocked by the enlarged prostate, the obstructive tissue is moved aside. A trigger pull inserts a curved 19-gauge nitinol needle through the prostate. A second trigger pull deploys the implant, anchoring a small nitinol tab outside of the prostate while partially retracting the needle. Attached to the nitinol tab is a length of monofilament PET suture. A third trigger pull fully retracts the needle and tensions the suture. Trigger pull number four completes the implant by placing a stainless steel urethral end piece onto the suture while also cutting the suture. Depending on the prostate size and amount of blockage, additional implants may be placed in the same way. The physician will determine the number of implants needed for each individual patient to obtain an open anterior channel. The outer capsule of the prostate is firm and provides a solid anchor. This allows the implants to lift and hold the enlarged prostate tissue out of the way so it no longer blocks the urethra. The implant size is customized to each individual patient and prostate lobe. As the suture is tensioned, it also shortens, compressing the prostate lobes to the side. This reduces pressure on the urethra and provides immediate visible results, so urine can flow freely. It's a mechanical solution to a mechanical problem. The minimally invasive procedure requires no cutting, heating, or tissue removal. This procedure preserves sexual function. It typically also means minimal downtime, mild to moderate side effects, and a quick return to normal activity. The Urolift system provides a clinically proven treatment for men who suffer from an enlarged prostate that may help get men off BPH medications and may help avoid major surgery. I do assist with these procedures, so I'm very familiar with the Urolift. Um, the you know, animations always make it look a lot better, but the uh, actual time to put each one of those little clips in is probably about 30 seconds. Those four steps that it takes to get those to seat in is really pretty quick. Um, again, how many are done depends on how big your prostate is. It's a decision how well it opens up as you start putting them in. So you want to make sure you get enough in there to really get a good opening. I've seen as little as four used and probably as many as about eight used sometimes. Um, but again, it's pretty uh, quick to place each one. So here's actually what our system looks like. So the scope is inside the patient right now. And actually you're looking all the way through into the bladder. So the first thing we're going to do is fill up his bladder with some water to try to get it out of the way. It's all done under that previous anesthetic that we talked about. And we're still looking into the bladder. Now we're coming out of the bladder and into the prostate. So that's the whole key is right there is you want to find the areas of the prostate that you can tuck back. You don't want to be too close to the what we call the bladder neck so that's coming back and you can see there he is getting lined up and we're going to put it on one side and you're going to hear that click as it fires it in there it did it just fired that in now the next noise will be the click as it releases the clip in the back and now you can see the string right through there so uh there is a nice video that they put together with some patient information, I think, and instructions, so I'm going to play that next. The Eurolift System Procedure. Treatment with the Eurolift System offers rapid relief for men living with symptoms of an enlarged prostate. It can break the cycle of BPH medications and how they make a person feel, all with fewer risks than reported for traditional surgery. It is usually performed in an outpatient setting, and most patients typically return home the same day without a catheter. The goal of the Eurolift system treatment is to relieve BPH symptoms so you can get back to your life and resume your daily activities. The Eurolift system includes a revolutionary approach to treat your enlarged prostate that lifts and holds the enlarged prostate tissue so it no longer blocks the urethra. Unlike other leading BPH procedures, 
The treatment does not require heating, cutting, or removal of the prostate tissue, offering a mechanical solution to a mechanical problem. The treatment offers rapid relief of your BPH symptoms, with less risks often associated with the downsides of medications. The Eurolift system offers a fast recovery with a low risk profile and it is the only leading BPH procedure shown to not cause new and lasting sexual dysfunction. Prior to your Eurolift system treatment, your doctor will discuss how to prepare for your treatment, including potentially temporarily discontinuing certain medications. Your doctor will also discuss with you proper post-treatment care. Most patients do not require a catheter after having the Eurolift system treatment. Most patients get back to their normal daily activities within days. The Eurolift system, the proven minimally invasive BPH treatment that fills the gap between prescription medications and more invasive surgical procedures. Most common side effects are temporary and can include discomfort when urinating, urgency, inability to control the urge, pelvic pain, and some blood in the urine. Rare side effects, including bleeding and infection, may lead to a serious outcome and may require intervention. Visit Eurolift.com. We have it. I think there was a pretty good video that uh, covered a lot of that information. Uh, let's go into our five H's that I always like to, to do on, especially on something that I'm super familiar with. Um, so how is it done? This is done in office. We don't take anyone to the uh, hospital, surgery centers, to just do it in your, we do it in our office. Um, now it depends on your physician as to what they prefer to do. Uh, how much will it hurt? So I scored this on a zero to 10 scale, a little bit higher than the, the resume four to five, um, because you have to compress the, the prostate a little bit with that, uh, cystoscope. So sometimes that pushing can be a little bit uncomfortable. So maybe a little bump up in that, but certainly well tolerable. Uh, how long does the whole procedure take? About 15 minutes is a pretty good uh, average from the start of it till the finish. And recovery, as I said, kind of like two to four weeks. I kind of put it two to three weeks. Uh, again, you know, you may be uncomfortable for the urinations from irritation of having that scope place, et cetera, but it goes away pretty quick. Um, and you don't have to have a catheter, so you don't have that to recover from. And how well does it work? Well, there's good documentation, of uh, five-year data on this one also with good efficacy. So it does work well. So it's in the appropriate patient, this can be a good treatment option for you. Uh, now, I thought it'd be a good time to discuss, since we just talked about Resume, Resume versus Eurolift. What would you recommend or what would you get done? So I think that, you know, there are some prostates that are more amendable to the Resume versus the Eurolift. and probably some that are better Eurolift uh, candidates. So a lot of times that's something the, the physician's experience will really pay off. So it's always good. Do yourself a favor, ask the doctor how many of these he's done because this is one of those things that does have a little bit of a learning curve. The more you've done, the more tricks you learn, and it makes a big difference. So we've done a lot of both of these, and I can tell you that from the, the first cases to the ones we do now, the, it's, it's definitely a lot easier because we've encountered some of the issues that you sometimes run into, and some of the equipment has been updated even. So it doesn't really matter which one you have done as far as symptom release, relief goes. I think you're going to get good relief from either one, but you may not be a candidate for either one so or one or the other or either one. Sometimes if your prostate's too, too large or too small, you can't do either one. So anyway, best to check with your doctor to see what's best for you. Now we're going to, I just wanted to put a plug in for next week. Join us again uh, at 1030 central time for it live or you watch it on demand. But we're going to be talking about the next one, which is Optilum as another treatment for BPH, a minimally invasive surgery. And this involves ballooning the prostate. That's been done in the past, but this is a new technique that is really having some good uh, some good responses to it. And Dr. Dean Alterman is going to be joining us to talk a little bit about that. So we'll have some information from him on that. And uh, so be sure to join us next week for this show. And always good to have you on board the Euro Patient Podcast.